Hello, everybody. Welcome back to A Cult of Misfits. I am the glorious Matt Owens. How's it going? Today, I want to tell you a story about helping a lady find a diamond on the pavement. I want to talk about Instagram blocking me. I want to talk about free speech and censorship. But I also want to talk about victimhood. I'm going to talk about aliens because they're really on my mind. And I also want to talk about my need for victory, my need to prove myself. And also, I want to talk about Tetris. So let's start with the diamond story. This week I was taking Chi-Chi, my precious, precious Chi-Chi, for a walk. And it was at night, meaning, you know, it was 4 p.m., uh, complete blackness. <laughs> so I'm taking Cheech for a walk. Um, he loves a good nighttime walk, by the way. There's lots of, uh, lots of creatures roaming around that he loves to sniff. So, um, love a good nighttime walk. So we're walking through the high school, um, and there's this lady with a flashlight who's obviously like scanning back and forth, looking for something on the ground. And we're walking on like asphalt pavement and there's nobody else around and I'm I'm very aware that I'm just a strange guy on a walk and she has no idea what my intentions are and I know that that can be scary for many people so uh you know I kind of gave her some wide berth and I uh, tried to smile in the <laughs> empty void of the 4 p.m darkness um I just smiled and said hey you know do you need a hand like what are you looking for and she goes, oh, my friend, uh, it was her last day at work today and she lost her diamond. And so, and, you know, I'm just trying to help her out because I feel bad that she lost her diamond. So I said, well, like, I, you know, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Like I can, I'm happy to help you look like I've got a flashlight on my phone. And she's like, well, I guess, you know, like, I, I didn't know. And I said, well, you know what? I'm sure it'll work out. Like, good luck. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to freak her out. Right. So I said, okay, well, have a good night, you know, whatever. And I just kept walking. Um, and I looped around and came back at the end of my walk and she was still there. Now she's in the parking lot, uh, just scanning back and forth. And so, uh, I said, you know what? I'm feeling lucky. So I, I at this point I'm yelling, kind of yelling at her cause she's not that close to me. She's at the parking lot. And I said, I'm just going to take a look with the flashlight. No big deal. And she's like, yeah, okay. Like <laughs> whatever, dude. Um, and so I'm like, I, I got a feeling I'm going to, I'm going to find this fucking diamond. And so I whip out my flashlight on my cell phone, which, you know, isn't super powerful, but like if, if it's gonna, if it's gonna get the job done, it's gonna like, you know, glint in the diamond and I can see it in the darkness or whatever. So I'm just scanning back and forth, like letting my, letting the force lead me to, you know, to, to the location of this diamond. Um, and so I'm just scanning back and forth with Chi Chi on the leash, just looking at me like, what the hell are we doing? Um, I'm like, come on, boy, where's the diamond? Where's the diamond boy? He, that's what I need to train him to do is to search for diamonds, but that's for another day, obviously. Um, so we're scanning back and forth and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm just confident I'm going to find this fucking diamond. And so sure enough, my flashlight tags something on the ground that's shimmering. And I'm like, no way. And so I bend down. I had already had a couple of false alarms. So I thought like, well, it's on this as this old asphalt pavement. And so there's lots of like little pebbles and little tiny stones and stuff. So like everything kind of could be a diamond maybe. So it's kind of not the best uh, you know, place to be losing your diamond. Um, but I see it in the light of my iPhone and I bend down and it's a fucking diamond. And so I stand up and I said, I got it. And she, she jerks up. She's like, what? No, you didn't. She's kind of, there's kind of like a little bit of anger in her voice. She's like, no, you didn't. And I said, yeah, I'm like, I got it. Like, I felt like I found a diamond. And so I start walking it over to her slowly, realizing like, you know, she doesn't know my intentions. And again, like it's dark out. There's nobody else around. So I'm trying to just be cool about it. So I'm like extending my arm outward, like, like I'm approaching a wild animal or something, uh, letting her know my peaceful intentions. And I said, well, like, I, you know, I, I did find it. Uh, like, if you want to take a look at it, I don't know what it looks like or whatever. But, like, so I show it to her, and she's very skeptical, right, <laughs> obviously, and on high alert. And so I just say, look, you know, like, you can just take it. I, I, have, I found it. Um, <laughs> so I hand it over to her. And she looks at, she's got a much power, she's got a much more powerful flashlight than me, like a, like a heavy-duty military grade or whatever. Um, 
<laughs> it's the light of 12 suns, guys. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And so she puts this, uh, you know, beautiful gem that I've found uh, under the light of her <laughs> holy flashlight. And the look on her face was, I would call it disgust. She was disgusted with me. She looked at me and said, this is a belly button ring. <laughs> And now that she had mentioned it, I looked at it again and I was like, okay, well, now that you say it, 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 it I can see that it's a belly button ring. Okay. I got real excited there. I, I, I got real wound up in the hunt. Um, sorry. Have a good night. <laughs> um, so I came back the next day <laughs> and, uh, this I'm for, for reals just to see like, you know, let's just see in the daylight. Um, since daylight is only for two hours a day, apparently we live in Norway. Um, so I went to check it in the daylight and I didn't find it guys. I didn't find it. Sorry to get your hopes up there. I didn't find it. Um, but as I was thinking about this story today to tell you, it was making me laugh. It reminded me of another diamond story that just popped into my head that I forgot about. Um, not once, but twice was I a, a dingus when it comes to diamonds. Clearly, I am not around diamonds enough to know, <laughs> to know the difference. Um, I'm on a walk with Chi-Chi again, right? Maybe that's the key is he's my, he's my diamond dog. Maybe I do need to start training him because we're, we're coming into contact with a lot of diamond situations here. Uh, we're on a walk. This time, it's in a field. We're in a field. I'm, I'm with my kids, and I find this ring. And it's like a metallic ring, right? So the, the ring is metal. I don't know what kind of metal it is, guys. Clearly, I don't know what kind of metal it is. Um, but it's got this big fucking diamond on it. <laughs> um, and the kids ask if it's real. And I'm like, I kind of don't know, guys. I, I kind of start trying to chip at it to see, like, if it's costume jewelry, like, if it's plastic or something, it's going to, like, obviously chip off or something. So I'm, like, trying to chip it or mar it or, or something or scratch it or something. And it's kind of hard material. Like it's not, I'm not creating a blemish. So I'm not, it's not plastic. And so I'm like, uh, I don't know about this one. Okay. Okay. So I tuck it in my pocket. We, uh, we play at the park or whatever. And, um, we drive to a jeweler's, we drive to a jewelry store that's nearby. Um, <laughs> and I take it in and I walk up to the case and, um, the employee is behind the case and she's probably 12 feet away from me. Right. And I say, Hey, I found this on the ground. I'm just curious if it's a diamond or like, you know, what, what the, if it's authentic or whatever. And she goes, hold it up. And so I hold it up and she goes, Nope. And continues with her work. Like totally has her back to me. And she's not even that close to me. And I'm like, well, could you just humor me please? And like, look at it. Like you're, you're 12 feet away from me. Can you just like check it out? Cause I think like I've hit a jackpot here, right? I feel like this is, I found a fucking diamond ring. Like how lucky am I? Um, and so she like, you know, huffs and puffs over to me. Very, very angry that I'm wasting her time. Um, <laughs> and the, and the kids are with me and they're, they're just, you know, like, is it real? Is it real? And I'm like, okay guys, I, I, I think, I think we got a fake one here. So she like looks at it kind of a little too dramatically and rolls her eyes and is like, no, this is costume jewelry. It's worthless. Anything else, sir? And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> so, um, not good with the diamonds guys. <laughs> I wasn't meant to, uh, I wasn't meant to be a jeweler. Um, what else are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about Instagram. I'm, um, I'm kind of putting my heart and soul into the podcast and, uh, spirit has really been guiding me to focus more of my attention, uh, and heart and soul, et cetera, my energy on the podcast. So hi, here we are. Um, and the way that the universe has been pushing me in that direction is I tend to lean on Instagram more than any of my other platforms that I put, you know, put content on. <clears throat> But I'm kind of in this pattern of, you know, looking at Instagram every day and endless scrolling and like this is not news to anybody, right? Um, and so the universe is kind of pushing me away from Instagram because Instagram has been blocking my videos and kind of screwing with the, like just doing weird stuff, right? Um, not letting me go live, et cetera. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of giving myself a pat on the back as this is happening to me because uh, I you know, during the pandemic, I, I feel like I had what I would consider a, a major spiritual awakening slash 
you know, Dark Night of the Soul, right? <laughs> we, um, and during that time, my eyes were opened in a new way to how things are perhaps operating on <laughs> this planet with our government, etc. And uh, I got real riled up about free speech. I got real riled up about censorship. And I got real irate uh, at the whole concept, right? Like, how dare they try to censor me? Uh, you know, I got real wound up about it. And I got to a point in my path, my growth, whatever you want to call it, where I... Um, I started questioning that. I started because I didn't like that feeling in my heart, to be honest with you. And I, I wanted to change that because what I realized is that in blaming social media and shaking my fist at the government and, uh, you know, the, the pharmaceutical companies and all of that, and I don't mean to downplay any of it, right? Because it's all real and I believe that it's all a, a thing. But w what I'm talking about is my reaction and response to it. Rather than shaking my fist in the air and getting real riled up about it... <laughs> I realized that I was um, playing in victimhood. And I had never really thought about that before. And I had never really pondered it uh, and, and seen how much I was playing the victim in my own life, particularly at this place in, in time, right, around the, the pandemic. And so um, once I started addressing that within my own heart, that victimhood, it started melting away my anger for social media, my disdain for the government and, uh, you know, the, the long list of atrocities that are going on around the world, right? And again, I don't mean to downplay it all, but like, it, it all depends on how you choose to react to it. It's all in how I was choosing to respond to the government or Instagram or YouTube or whatever, whoever it was that was doing me wrong, those guys, right? The 1% or, you know, whatever, fill in the blank with whatever. It was me playing the victim. And so once I started consciously making a shift and becoming aware of how often I was playing the victim, uh, then I could become more aware of how oft I, I could see it now. I was aware of it. I was like, okay, shit, I'm actually playing the victim a lot. And I would like to change that within my own life, within my own heart. And so I'm going to start changing that. I'm going to start responding to these things differently. I'm going to stop freaking out about it. And it was a process. It was baby steps. It, it, it did not happen instantaneously. <laughs> <clears throat> and so I'm patting myself on the back because it's, it's come full circle now and Instagram is up to its, you know, shenanigans again. But at the end of the day, like they can do whatever the fuck they want. It's their platform. <laughs> so like I can choose to get riled up about it or not. And so, um, the new, the new improved version of me is choosing not to get riled up by that sort of thing. So, um, that's because of the practice that I've done over the last several years of just letting that shit go. So, um, I'm just taking a break from, from, from Instagram. I'm still posting to YouTube, but, uh, they did me dirty a few years ago, guys, but let's not talk about it. We've let that shit go, right? <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still, uh, posting the, the podcasts, um, on, uh, Spotify and Apple podcasts and YouTube. And I love seeing the statistics, seeing, you know, who's listening to me. So hello to everybody who's, who's checking, checking out the podcast. Um, I've got listeners from, the U.S., obvi, uh, the U.K., India, uh, where else? Germany. Got a couple of Germans out there. Hello, Germany. I've been to Germany. I loved it. It was very similar to the Pacific Northwest, uh, which I love. So it's a beautiful, beautiful country. Shout out to Germany. Um, what else we got, guys? Let's talk about aliens. That's, uh, that's what's on my mind here. And it's a huge topic. And I, I want to, I was going to do like, I was going to dedicate one episode to talk about aliens, but like, let's just talk about it in little bits and pieces. Um, because I'm thinking about disclosure a lot, specifically this week, disclosure, uh, you know, like the big reveal, Hey guys, there's aliens. Like, I think we're kind of past that in many ways. And of course there are some people that believe that there are not aliens or uh, whatever, but uh, everybody has a different opinion. Right. And at the end of the day, who knows? But, um, you know, just looking at the evidence, there, there's a lot, there's a lot pointing to the fact that, that there's aliens here, guys. <laughs> Even if 90% of all that stuff out there is fake, that there's, there's a lot of evidence pointing to the fact that there's, that there's aliens out there. Right. Okay. So I feel like that's, that's not even what the debate is about anymore. I feel like we've moved on past that as a civilization. Um, and the majority of people I believe are in the camp that like, okay, fine. Yes. There's probably aliens here. Okay. 
Now, I ask myself often, just because like I think about this stuff nonstop, right, that why hasn't there been a disclosure yet? I think that it's, and I think that the answer is that it's beyond, they're here. I, I don't think that, I think we're past that. I, I think that part of the reason why perhaps they haven't been revealed yet or shown themselves or whatever is because of, a, well, I have a couple different options here. The first option is that they are like reptilian, right? Or look terrifying or look demonic or, or something along those lines, right? Where their appearance is going to scare the shit out of most people. I think that maybe that's option number one is that, hey, there are aliens here, but um, <laughs> just a quick heads up, they do look like demons. Uh, so if you can get past the fact that they, <laughs> they look demonic, um, they're really great species, guys. Real fun guys to hang around. Uh, real knee slappers, these, <laughs> these reptilians. Uh, so I think that's option number one, is that perhaps they just would scare the shit out of us, right? Or option number two is that there's some sort of interdimensional, uh, or they're, they're hidden from our human eyes visually in some way. And that the real truth is that the real big reveal is that they are around us at all times and they always have been. I think that that would really freak a lot of people out. And I think that maybe that's why disclosure, I'm trying to think of like, why would it still be hidden? What reason beyond surprise they're here, um, beyond that, like what's the real reason perhaps that, <laughs> that, that they haven't revealed themselves? And I think it's because what would really scare most people? And I think it would be that scary demon faces <laughs> um, or perhaps I've also been thinking about like just stuff that is beyond most people's comprehension. Uh, that's just sort of like, you know, everybody has a different level, right? It's not like uh, everybody has a different <laughs> trying to be kind. Um, everybody has a threshold where they're like, nope, I'm checking out. That's too much for me. Nope tagging out on that one. I'm, uh, you, you got me there. That's, that's too much for me. And everybody has that level, right? Um, so that's okay. Everybody's level is different. Everybody's little, everything's a spectrum guys. Um, and so I'm wondering what that level is where most people would say, Nope, that's fucking too much for me. Nope. No, thank you. Um, you know, the, the, considering that we might be living in a simulation of some sort, um, I, I don't think that would freak out most people. It's, it's kind of seems a little weird to some people, perhaps like, like I get why people would be like, no, that's crazy. Like I get that, but I don't think it would freak out civilization. <sighs> so, um, you know, the quest continues to figure out like what the hell's going on around here. <clears throat> I've been really into, um, just diving into the weird stuff, right? About stargates and portals. And I'm, I'm just constantly wondering, there's just so much that we don't understand. P part of me um, is starting to wonder, and I'm not the first person to think of this, of course, but I'm starting to think about this theory that, um, you know, the gray aliens, the, the, you know, your typical Martian or whatever that has the big eyes and, and is gray or whatever and four feet tall, um, that there's some sort of a, a, a past version of ourselves or some sort of a future version of ourselves, what we evolve into, um, uh, you know, either on a, a different timeline or, or whatever. And that they're time travelers, we are time travelers, so that they're humans in, you know, a million years. That's what we look like. Or perhaps that's what the reptilians are. They are just a, a future, more advanced version of ourselves. And that's, we're just not ready for that kind of revelation yet, right? So these are the things I'm thinking about. Like, there's enough alien crashes. There's enough stories from people that, to me, appear reputable. Not all of them, of course, right? But, um... I just like to always weigh the options. I always like to look at it. Like, I really want it to be true, but I've learned to, to practice um, trying to look at the other side and, and say like, well, you know, there is a chance that, uh, that there are no aliens, that the whole thing is just some kind of a mix up, <laughs> that it's just some big conspiracy or something. But like, I just think that they're out there. And I think that, of course, there's, you know, multiple species is very likely, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of also wondering about, speaking about disclosure, that um, I'm wondering if, I, I feel like we're on a trajectory as a species to unlock telepathy, uh, whether we use it through a spiritual technology um, that is perhaps advanced, 
um, that was perhaps used by our ancestors, right? That we just have, that is now dormant in the modern human because, you know, 99% of our DNA is labeled by the mainstream scientific community as junk DNA. They literally have no idea what the hell it's there for. And so I think that it's there to unlock more potential within the human body. And, and uh, perhaps there's dormant cells and DNA that, um, that we haven't explored yet, right? So I think about these things and... Um, and so I think that perhaps we're unlocking, and, and so I think that maybe there's a really good chance that we're going to unlock this telepathy because the telepathy is already here on some level in a, in a small degree, right? Depending on who you are and, and what your gifts, your spiritual gifts happen to be. But, um, I've experienced telepathy on some level, uh, many times. And so it's, uh, it's unexplainable, right? Uh, and I think many people have, you know, you, you think about that friend of yours that you haven't talk to in 20 years and they call you, you know, the next day, that sort of a thing. It's like, whoa, that was weird. Uh, or just knowing what somebody is thinking as soon as they walk in the room. It's, uh, there's stuff like that. That's, you know, you guys, I'm like, I have to explain it to you guys, but, um, I think we're on a trajectory of unlocking that in a more real, you know, sci-fi way, uh, where we can actually just read each other's minds. And then also in a technological way, um, man-made technologies, uh, like Elon Musk's, um, Neuralink, I think that we're headed in that direction one way or the other. I think that we're going to be telep a telepathic species. I think that it's inevitable with the technology that we're developing right now or the technology that we're accessing from our ancestors, right? So I think it's kind of exciting. And I wonder if disclosure is not disclosure of aliens, but I wonder if disclosure is once the entire population or most of the population or even any large segment of the population that that is activating this neural link that they can read each other's minds the the veil is dropped there is no lying anymore there is nothing that can remain hidden anymore and i think that i wonder if um this peeking behind the veil which another word for that is the apocalypse that means uh you know removing of the veil if this removing of the veil is uh, just seeing everything in this reality for what it truly is, right? I think that's what I think that's what disclosure is truly going to be, and I think that um, you know this interdimensionality of uh, beings on this planet, and um, I think that it's all starting to come to light. So I choose to be excited about the technology. I choose to think that we're heading in a, in a direction that is beneficial for the planet. Because here's the deal. This is what I've learned. Um, this is what I've learned. <laughs> is that the more that you focus on the negative, the more that you focus on that we're going to hell in a handbasket, the more that your reality will be that. And it will keep the frequency at that level in your world and on, and on the planet. So I think that as society starts um, shifting the way that they react and respond to these things, whether it's free speech, censorship, or, you know, alien disclosure, or any of these things, right? Um, the more that we focus on those things in a negative light, the more that they will continue to prosper, and so what I've learned to do is don't give them my energy at all. It just feeds that negativity. It feeds that darkness and keeps me in that feedback loop that I did not want to be in. And so I broke myself free from that feedback loop. And for me, I just wanted to be free from all of that. And I totally understand uh, people who are in that place where... Um, they do see all of the injustice. They do see everything that is going wrong in this world and what the government is doing. And I'm, I, I feel like I sort of went through that phase in, in many ways. And so for me, uh, I feel m much more free, which is what I'm essentially looking for. I just feel free from all of it now because I've just let it go. All right, let's talk about Star Wars. Uh, we're going to talk about Star Wars. We're going to talk about uh, the need to prove myself, uh, the need for victory. And um, there's a lot of analogies here, a lot of Star Wars analogies and a Tetris analogy. And I, I want to talk about... We gotta talk about Tetris, guys. Um, so I'm watching one of the Star Wars. It was a third one, I think. I don't even remember. But um, Obi-Wan Kenobi said to Anakin Skywalker... Your need for victory, Anakin, blinds you. Your need to prove yourself will be your undoing. And I heard these and I paused it and ran over to write it down real quick because it totally clicked with what I was dealing with in my own life. So let me say those quotes again. Your need for victory, 
blinds you. Your need to prove yourself will be your undoing. And I definitely have this need right now to prove myself, to, to have a big victory. It's at the forefront of my mind, and I'm, I was going to say borderline obsessing about it, but I'm just straight up obsessing about it. It's on my thoughts nonstop, and the universe is letting me know to let go of my grip on that. Let go of my need to be victorious, right? Because not everything in my life is meant to be a victory. I'm also meant to fall on my ass because there's lessons to be learned in all situations, And so to let go of the need to prove myself to people, right? Because all of these things, needing victory, needing to prove myself, needing to show this or show that or explain that, or all of those things are of the ego. All of those things are of the flesh. They're just me seeking outside acceptance is what it is, right? Needing to, needing to have the acceptance of others. And that's, that's the theme of what I've been really dealing with a lot in the last year is letting go of my need for other people's acceptance, specifically people in my life that are like family members, right? That I, that I really wanted and needed their acceptance and approval. And I never got it in a way that I really needed. And to walk through the process within my own heart of letting go of that need for them to accept me. Because in doing that, it was the path to me becoming my true authentic self. And I couldn't be my true authentic self when I was constantly relying on other people's love and acceptance because I had to first look within and learn to love and accept myself first. That's what that lesson was all about. And here I am again, given another chance to let go of my grip on this, to let go of my grip and and need for victory. Especially like in manifestations, like when I'm trying to manifest something in my life, it tends to, uh, you know, it tends to be all consuming. And so what I'm realizing, this goes back to social media as well. I was having a little chat with Spirit last night and Spirit let me know that um, I'm obsessing over these manifestations and that's part of the reason, and that in itself is blocking the manifestations in many ways because, um, for example, I, on Instagram, I follow many accounts of, you know, uh, dream homes and mansions and, uh, you know, uh, fancy fancy living, (laughs) right? And so I constantly, uh, since I'm on Instagram all day, right? Like many of us are, um, spirit reminded me that my entire Instagram feed is filled with these images of things that I don't have yet. And so whether it's subconsciously or not, I'm looking at all these images of, uh, you know, mansions and uh, fancy cars and, you know, uh, uh, vacation uh, places and stuff like that. And, I, and it's constantly reinforcing, we don't have that yet. We don't have that yet. We don't have that yet. And it puts me in a state of lack. And what I've been trying to do the last couple of years is break myself free from that pattern of lack, choosing not to view it that way. Right. And so, um, I realize that I'm on social media bombarding myself subconsciously with these images of lack. And so it's just one more reason on the list of reasons why I'm going to be taking a, a hiatus from Instagram and social media um, is because um, I just want to take a break. <laughs> right. And so um, just to reinforce this concept, I'll talk about Tetris. Um, first of all, I need you guys to know that. I would, I would categorize myself as a Tetris wizard. I have superhuman abilities when it comes to Tetris. Um, I can't explain it. It's a gift from God, but, uh, I'm absolutely unstoppable when it comes to Tetris. Right. And so, um, I was recently at, um, my sister, one of my sister's house and, um, playing Tetris at her house. And I humbly, I humbly made my name on the game, the master, right? Because, um, I'm just real proud of it, guys. <laughs> Speaking of ego. Um, but that's what this is. That's what this conversation is about is ego, right? And so, uh, I called myself the master just to let everybody know as if it weren't completely clear who was the big dog around here when it comes to Tetris. Um, and so I made a point of filling every single high score with the master right? I had to make sure that I was on every scoreboard. Um, 
And then the last time I was visiting, I was playing Tetris with my nieces. I was giving them a little workshop on how to, how to become masters themselves, right? They're little masters in training. I'm so proud of them. Um, so I was playing with my nieces and the old Nintendo cartridge glitched. Now I have to say for you, tech, for you Tetris aficionados, uh, this is technically the new Tetris on Nintendo 64. Okay. Um, it's my, it's the game that I, that I'm the best at, I, you know, give me any platform. I'll play Tetris on any platform you got, but, uh, this is, this is my fave. This is my fave. So I'm playing the new Tetris and, um, anyway, I'm playing with my nieces and right in the middle of one of a, a real, a real hot game guys, I was on fire. Uh, that goes without saying, right? Um, right in the middle of the game, it glitched and reset. And I was like, okay, well, whatever, no big deal. It's it's an old game, old cartridge, old system, whatever. So that's to be expected. So I gave it a good lick. Like, you got to give it a good lick, guys. Um, I don't think kids today appreciate licking the cartridge, like back in the good old days. But uh, gave it a blow, gave it a lick. Yes, it's meant to be sexual, guys. It's meant to be... Uh, I have an erotic relationship with the Nintendo cartridge. Just... <laughs> just putting that out there. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I fired her back up and, um, guess what? During the glitch, all of the high scores and all of the names completely reset. So that was, I, I don't have to tell you guys, that was very devastating for me. So I had to, my niece has got to see me sob uncontrollably in the corner. Um, and once I gathered myself together, I was like, that's okay, guys, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> no. Okay. I didn't really do that guys. Um, but it was like, oh, it was a huge fucking bummer. Um, and then guess what popped into my head as soon as that happened? Um, the universe said your need for victory, Anakin blinds you. Your need to prove yourself will be your undoing. And I was like, motherfucker, don't use Star Wars quotes against me. <laughs> but I'm just reinforcing uh, this idea that, like, why do you need to have all the Tetris high scores? Huh? Who are you trying to impress, buddy? Everybody is already impressed with your skills. Okay. You don't have to, like, go out of your way to say how, <laughs> you know, how you're the king. Um, but I do want you to put that I'm the king of my tombstone, though. That would whoever's listening, take care of that for me. Just like, king of Tetris, um, trying to remain humble, Meadowans. Um, <laughs> so look, guys, I'm still human, and the story's not over. So it glitched, and I was like, "Well, that's a bummer." So my nieces went off to school, and guess what I did? I spent the whole afternoon regaining my high scores. So I was like, "Well, that's fine. I'm just going to start from ground zero and." Uh, climb my way back up to the top, right? Got to show that, got to show everybody who's who around here. And so I continued playing all afternoon, just on fire, guys, dominating the game. And um, about the third hour, no, I don't know, that does seem dramatic, but I was playing for a while. Um, at some point, the motherfucking game glitched again. And I was like, no, 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 no. And I uh, gave it a good lick. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come back to me. Come back to me. Gave it a good lick. And threw it back into the slot. <laughs> I was like, what other sexual things can I talk about? Threw it into the slot. And um, it was gone forever. And the universe just sort of smiled at me and said, see, buddy, what are you doing? What are you doing there? Uh, you got to give up trying to prove yourself, right? Like, just play for fun. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the game. Don't try to do anything beyond that big guy. Uh, so Tetris has really taught me a lesson this week and I'm thankful for it. So, uh, that's all I got. Love you guys. End transmission.